Hey guys, I see everybody jumping on. Hi. Just give me a second here because I'm feeding it to our private group. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys have your water, you have your notebooks. There we go. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes. I'm gonna close this window down because I do not want to see myself. <laughs> And then bring up the training. There we go. Okay, guys. Hi. Oh my gosh, I see you guys all jumping on. Okay, so let me just refresh this. We're gonna start right at 1 p.m. We're gonna make this quick and actionable because um, this isn't a web class, it's an online training. I want this to be interactive. So if you have any questions throughout the training, let me know if I miss them because there's gonna be a bunch of us. I will come back and answer them. And that goes for people that are on me live in Zoom and in the Facebook group. If you guys have questions as you're watching it there, post in the comments, I will come back and answer them. I also have a four-year-old that has an earache, I'm not quite sure. Um, so I might have to cut the Q&A short, but I, I will come back later today, if not tomorrow for sure, to answer everything for you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna plug in my phone here too. And then we're gonna jump in and get started. Let me see, make sure I can see me here. There I am. Perfect, so I can see the comments and everything. Hopefully you guys are good. Hi. Hey Sue, hi Jen. Awesome, awesome. Okay, 1 p.m., let's dive in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Restore Your Core. So the whole premise behind this, if you got my email, was that I got a bunch of questions because obviously everyone's trying to get summer ready, meaning whatever that is for you, feeling strong, feeling confident, feeling hot, you know, not being tied to your sarong this, this, this summer or freaking out if someone's taking a picture of you, whatever it may be. And a lot of it stems from an insecurity with our core region, which we are going to talk about today. Some really key principles about restoring our core and getting confidence back. And yes, we can say the words abs and tone lines in our forties. It is possible. And we're going to talk about that today in this nice, short, actionable class. Okay. So again, I'm so excited you guys are here. Um, it's taking me back to my roots because I am a certified personal trainer, but I haven't practiced one-on-one uh, -on -one or in a gym or anything for years. It was a former chapter, um, but I love obviously functional movement and biomechanics. So I'm loving this class. And I also bring that a lot to my clients, right? So um, I am love that we're doing this and I hope to do a lot more of these trainings coming up. So stay tuned for those. If we haven't met, um, my name is Monica Tuffel. Everyone calls me Moni. I am a performance nutrition and function nutrition and fitness specialist. I am the founder and creator of the 3M system that works with women over 40 to rev your aging metabolism. What does that mean? It means I work with the over 40 physiology, yours and mine, I'm 46 and a half, and how we can naturally rid the fluff and just reconnect with our bodies again to feel our best. Because really, honestly, we're already in our 40s or maybe even early 50s. Some of you guys joining and watching, hey, I see you guys all jumping on. So that is um, what I do in a nutshell. And uh, lose the fluff and gain confidence, okay? Uh, but let's dive in on what we are talking about specifically today. And I'm gonna turn off my video and I'll come on because we're gonna be doing some exercises together. Yay! If I can turn off my video, one sec. There we go. Okay, so we are going to cover today, like I said, I had tons of questions coming in saying, you know, can I really have abs in my 40s? You know, how can I reconnect with my, my core again? Because I feel like we've broken up totally normal and you are not alone in that feeling. So tonight, we're tonight today, we're going to dive into the three key steps that we need to do in our 40s to restore our core, reconnect with our core, feel our abs, have tone lines, all that flat tummy for summer, all that fun stuff. Plus, I'm going to give you guys a bonus, which is the most effective ab exercise. And a hint, this is not a sit-up. It is not a sit-up. Can you believe it? So what we're going to do is we're going to do that. I'm going to give you the big three big steps. We're going to do the bonus. Um, and then I have a special offer for you. And then we are going to dive into some Q&A. Okay, so if you have questions throughout this, I'll keep my comment box in my um, Facebook open and in, in my Zoom. 
and uh, either it's a replay or live, let me know, I'll come back. And I always love starting these trainings with some kind of quote, right? Some kind of feel good, something to think about. And I love this quote. I wish I knew, um, knew who said it. But if you are persistent, you will get it. If you are consistent, you will keep it. And that is really so pertinent in our 40s because gone are the days, guys, of that go big, go home, 10 pounds in 10 days, 30 day sit up challenge or any of those things. We really, we can be persistent and get the results, but we wanna keep them on a consistent basis because I think we're all tired of the yo-yo dieting or the losing the fluff or toning our midsection and then losing it all, falling off the wagon, I guess you could say, then finding motivation a couple months later to go through the whole shebang again. And that stops here. That's not real life. We need to figure out things that will work in our lives that will just give us the results that we want, the goals that we want, and make us allow us to feel what we want, right? So the biggest questions I have from you guys come in were these. I love this girl's face too, her little crop top with her abs screaming, doing a sit up, of course. But the biggest questions are, you know, if you're sitting a lot, you know, maybe a lot of us are in the height of our careers and maybe that is a desk job and maybe you have to drive to that desk job or maybe you travel a lot for work or whatever it may be, you may sit a lot and that actually redirects how our muscles work. So we have to really retrain our muscles to get the right core muscles engaged again, which is hard to do because we've lost a bit of that mind-body connection, especially with our core. I also get a lot of questions on like, how do I just target that area? I know I can't spot reduce, I know that, but how do I just target that area in the right way so I can actually burn more fluff and tone my middle? And there is a way to do that. And yes, tone lines. Someone's like, really tone lines in my 40s? Moni, is that even possible? Yes, you can have abs. I'm not gonna say you're gonna have a six pack, but we can have a nice tone and tight core ab region in our 40s. And I'm going to show you how to ease get that kick started here today. All right. So, but first and foremost, let's just, let's talk about your core, really, because I think a lot of people think of our core, they're like, yeah, it's our, it's our tummy and our abs, but a lot of people really don't know that your core is actually your whole midline access. So everything from sort of the base of your neck all the way down to your pelvis, right? So like this quote says, anything that basically doesn't include your, your arms and your legs is your core. And that core all really has a symbiotic relationship and works together. But the biggest signs that your core, that includes your abs, needs work our lower back pain is super common, uh, tight hips, or even tight sore shoulders, poor posture is super common if your core needs work, weakness in your extremities is common, holding your breath. So if you do any kind of ab work or sit-ups and you find yourself holding your breath through the movements, that's a sign that your core needs some work. Or what about this one, which a lot of women get, especially if they've had kids, and that is maybe you're jumping or you're laughing and you maybe pee a little bit <laughs> or you're running to the bathroom, right? And, you know, I'm going to actually go back here for just a second because we really have to concentrate on sort of these core ab training tips. I'm going to give you some exercises that we can do, but the biggest, one of the biggest advices, and hopefully you guys have a pen and paper with you is to almost video yourself when you're training your core or seeking professional help. You can come to me even when it comes to form because form is so huge. And that is why I'm not a huge advocate for the typical sit up because it's very easy to do wrong and puts a lot of pressures on our lumbar spine and our cervical spine. So we really wanna make sure that our training tips, we're building that mind body connection. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of women find it so difficult to get abs or a flat tummy is because we just don't feel those muscles working as much as we used to, or maybe we're carrying the extra fluff on it more than ever before. So really connecting with those ab muscles. And we're going to do some exercises together, you and me right here. If you're sitting in your chair, you can still do them. And to help regain that mind body connection. I always say there's no better feeling than feeling that your lower abs are sore. 
and feeling that soreness the next day because your mind connects with that muscle again. And the next sort of core ab training tip I would say is breathing, breathing the right way through the exercise because that will actually activate those deep core muscles that we need to focus on first and foremost. And we're gonna get through that in our three principles. But breathing will activate those core muscles and then time and patience. I know the two things that were just like, please, I wish there was like a quick, you know, get it done quick and it happens quick, but this is the reality. We have an over 40 physiology. It takes time to heal and rebuild and to train. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just takes time and we need patience with ourselves. And sometimes that's the hardest thing, the mental game, because maybe before, you know, you'd have vacation and you work out hard for two weeks and you do a ton of setups and then you're bikini ready. But now in our forties, it doesn't happen that way. So we have to have some patience. And this is obviously number one. Whenever we're talking about, you know, flattening our tummy, getting a stronger core, reconnecting with our bodies, losing the fat, nutrition's number one. And it does start here because we know that it's the foundation. We can't build the house strong and toned without that foundation. And really with nutrition, the protocol, the healing protocol that I do with my clients are revolved around these two things when it comes to our core. Number one, we need to reduce inflammation. We need to get that bloating and that inflammation out of our body. And we have to learn what triggers bloating for us. There's no sense training our core and getting stronger in our core if we're feeling bloated and heavy all the time. We need to rid the inflammation and that's done through healing nutrition. And the second thing is no SpongeBob. <laughs> so if you build all this amazing muscle and get stronger and toner, but then you still have the fluff over top, you're gonna actually feel bigger and square. This was me. This was me to a T. I was training like crazy, sit ups like crazy. And I was like, why do I feel like SpongeBob SquarePants? Because we need to allow our bodies to naturally release the fat over top of those muscles to show the nice toned midsection that we crave. And that is done through nutrition. Now I have a couple of resources. If you guys have not gotten your hands on these, I did just about a month ago, the flexible meal planning guide for busy women in their forties. This is an awesome go-to guide. PM me if you haven't got your hands on a copy yet. And also um, the 21 day uh, meta boosting meal plan, which is basically 21 days of meals and grocery list and recipes all planned out for you. You can pick and choose what you'd like, adjust the serving sizes to fit your life, make it easy while your metabolism just naturally revs and releases that fluff. Two great resources to get you started on the nutrition side. Again, if you haven't gotten your hands on them, let me know and I will send them to your way. Send them your way. All right, so let's all start with with, this is the three steps. And this is what we're going to talk about here a little bit more. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. First, we're going to talk about posture. I know it kind of seems lame and boring, but really posture is in abs have such a codependent relationship. It really is the foundation and we have to start here. The next step two is stability and mobility. In this phase, it's all about working your deep core muscles to strengthen and support your overall core system. Yes, ladies, it does mean abs and flat tummy, but we need this phase first before we strengthen and tone. Where this phase, we sort of safely and effectively tone the outer muscles that give us the svelte waist and some tone lines. And we, but we have to make sure we do that without creating any imbalances in the first two, our posture and our stability. Okay. Very key. It's a lot of people want to go to this one first. They're like, I want a toned abs. I want abs for summer. I want a flat tummy. And they'll go forget about posture, forget about stability, mobility, and they'll go right into here. And that is a like huge it. detriment. Yes, I have my four-year-old here with me. Sorry. Mm. I'm not going to apologize. Right, Mila? <laughs> She's got my makeup all over her face. She's supposed to be sick, but that's okay. She likes to work out too, don't you? Yeah. So, but we go right into the strength and, and tone first when we really should be concentrating on posture and, and don't be. Shh. And don't be. 
flat tummy. Your flat tummy, right. Okay, so here's the game, okay. game plan, guys. <laughs> oh, my Mila. Just give me one second here, guys. One second here. I'm gonna I'm texting dad to come get my little one. <laughs> hang tight, hang tight, come on. <laughs> I know, you're supposed to be sick, not at school. You're not at school, you have a party on. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Got the text to dad, come get Mila. She's got the party hat on. She's like ready to go. Meanwhile, the school called me to come get her. That's okay. So let's dive in here, brief pause. So restore your core. Here's what our game plan is gonna be on those three steps that we talked about, okay? Number one, posture. Because posture really has a surprising role, not only in our core, but really in our overall health. And like I said before, your core and your posture have posture have a codependent relationship. So when they're both are healthy and strong, life is good. But if one's a little off, it can actually throw the other way out of whack, leading to possible pain, injury, and even health problems like constipation, indigestion. That is because your inner and outer core muscles or ab muscles can support your body in both good and not so great postures. So for example, if you sit a lot, here's my sitting, muscles in your front of your body, so your shoulders, your neck, your chest, and your hips can come, become really tight and almost constricted as your body naturally folds forward as you sit. While the muscles in the back of your body, so your back and your glutes, etc., they become a little bit weaker. So your core muscles can reinforce those postures, which creates an imbalance through your body. So just imagine this. So you're sitting all day, you're engaging the front of your body more than you really know. Now imagine doing some crunches or sit-ups with that body that actually creates more of that forward flex posture. Your outer core will get even stronger in that forward posture, making it even worse, ouch. So some basic processes can happen with other posture issues too. This is why it's so important to take the time to restore your core by rebuilding it from the inside out in a way that doesn't reinforce poor habits, poor posture habits, right? So that's a big takeaway from my girls, my ladies that sit, or my you know power CEO moms that are you know doing the desk job and traveling doing all those things we want to make sure you know sit up snipe might not be the best thing because you're really reinforcing that forward slunched and the strength in that forward posture so here's an exercise I want you guys to do with me okay if you're sitting or standing it doesn't matter we can all do it together okay and I want you to think of your pelvis as a bucket okay so it's very typical for us to almost have an interior pelvic tilt. So maybe almost feeling like that bucket, the middle of the bucket is sort of by your belly button area, okay? But instead, I want you to do this while you're sitting. So get a good posture, shoulders back, relaxed and down, okay, back nice and straight. And then just tilt your, your pelvis forward a little bit without changing anything else. Okay, you're not moving your seat. You're just tilting that pelvis forward a little bit to get that top of the bucket sort of in line with the center of our body. Right away, you should feel that belly button go into your spine, engaging that lower ab area. Okay, hold that for a few seconds. Feel those muscles work, engage, and tighten. Okay, very important to try to get that posterior pelvic tilt back. We're so used to getting a bit of the arch in the back, going for support in the interior by just getting that belly button in, elongating, contracting that lower app. Just an awesome little exercise, a little tip that you could do standing 
waiting in line somewhere or sitting at your desk, do you know a couple of these, hold for 10 seconds, do about you know five to eight or so, just to re-engage that proper posture and pelvic tilt and re-engage with those muscles again, okay? Number two is stability. This is where, this is so important, this one, guys, because this is where we build a firm foundation for your core by strengthening your innermost ab muscles. Working these muscles takes focus and attention, but you will love the results because you really, before you get into like strengthening and toning and sit-ups and doing all these things, which we'll talk about in a second, we need to have the stability, okay? We need to have this first or else our form goes crazy. We start bloating at our abs during sit-ups, breathing improperly, wrong form causing injury, actually making our, our abs and our core look bigger, okay? Bad form can actually make you look bigger through the middle than actually tone and tightening through the middle. So some key tips with these, key, these exercises, these are three of my favorite for stability. So if you're just starting out, especially to really wanting to firm up your core for the, for the summer and get some abs going, we need to start here. So the tips are one, if these exercises are too easy, you need to double check your technique. <laughs> 100%. Okay. Mind body connection is really big here. Contracting the muscles, contracting the abs, belly button to the spine. Okay. Breathing. And here's the thing. You can do these exercises every other day. Your abs are still a muscle group. Your core still has muscles involved in it. They need rest periods. So if you try to join some 30 day sit up challenge that has you doing sit ups every single day, you are not doing yourself a favor when it comes to restoring your core and actually getting a toned and tightened core in your forties. In your forties, 40 physiology, it takes a longer time to heal and metabolically adapt to what's going on. All right. So my favorite one is the top one right here, the plank. I think we've all seen the good old plank. You lie on the floor, your stomach, um, and you raise up onto your forehands. Your elbows are directly under your shoulder. See that line there. She's a nice 90 degree angle from shoulder, um, elbow to wrist. Your abs are braced and your spine long and strong. Okay. Raise up to your, raise your knees up. You can also keep your knees down if you're just starting out and your head should be aligned with your spine. So no looking up, okay, I call it the chicken looking up. And if you're new to, to planks, try to hold for maybe 20 or 30 seconds and then slowly lower your knees down and relax, okay? To make it more challenging, maybe you're a plank pro, ground your toes into the floor, um, lift your knees, then press the back into your heels to activate your thighs to keep your body aligned and you can also even maybe try raising one foot at a time about you know three or four inches above the other ankle and hold that for 20 or 30 seconds and alternating from side to side it's a great planks never go out of style they're always needed for our stability and movement the next one on the bottom left there is bird dog. So seems very elementary in yoga. You may have done this, but trust me, stability is key. And these are one of these key movements that'll get you there on your hands and knees with your uh, one hand shoulder with the part, your hand shoulder width apart, and then um, knees hip distance apart, brace your core, which means you don't want to contract your core all the time, but pretend like somebody's tickling you right? And you just have those, uh, those muscles a little bit contracted, belly button into the spine. So then you reach your right leg behind you, keeping your leg up at hip level while extending your left arm. Hold and release and repeat on the opposite side for a total 10 reps each side. Okay, that's a great stability or exercise. It's also great for our back, which is a part of our core. When we're storing the core, we're talking about all the muscle groups. My last one here with the stability is the glute bridge. So if you lie on your back, your knees bent, feet flat on the floor, about hip distance apart, you can put your arms by your sides, um, you know, out or just by your hips, that's totally fine. But then lift your hips up as you contract your hamstrings and glutes. Okay, this is a great bum lifter, okay, part of our core. Hold for 30 seconds and then slowly release back to the floor, one vertebrae at a time, slowly come down, okay? So again, you can do, I don't, 
you know, two or three of these, hold for 30 seconds, as many as you're comfortable, but a great stability exercise. Another one is uh, floor cobra. Okay, so when you're, or Superman, some people call them. Um, another one that is a great stability exercise is the glute engagement squats, okay? When we really focus on, it's a squat variation that focuses on breathing to really engage and strengthen your pelvic floor, which is a part of your core, okay? Very, very important. All right, then our third phase. Are you guys with me, you still there? Let me see if I have any comments and let me comment on Facebook. Are you saying, okay, so you're saying, are you saying, quickly answer a question before we dive into number three. Are you saying that we need to work, focus on posture and stability before we do strength and tone? 100%, so you got it exactly right. So you need to focus on the posture, practice that pelvic tilt, and then focus on stability. A lot of people will go right into here, like just to number three and start with like crunches and you know Roman twists and doing all these things but really they haven't worked on those inner core muscles first. We need to strengthen those inner core muscles, create a balance in our body and then get to the strength, okay? Can we do them both at the same time? Yes and no, I would definitely start on more stability exercises first, get a lot stronger on that and then slowly introduce the strength and targeting and toning. This is what I do with my clients in the 3M system is that we just basically we focus on posture, then we focus on the stability uh, for a couple weeks and then we get into strength. Okay. But everyone's journey is different, but just be engaged. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right. Number three, strength. So it really can be, like I said, just do super tempting to start here in this phase, which includes many of our favorite ab standbys, you know, not just the exercises below or the side here, but also, you know, maybe captain's chair or Russian twist or maybe incline sit up or legs to sky or leg raises, which are all great ab exercises, but really avoid the temptation with the knowledge that you'll get even better results with those exercises if you build a strong and stable inner core first, which is done through stability in phase two. As always, focusing on form is super important. Also remember, you can build amazing core muscles, but if you want a lean midsection and that is your goal, nutrition plays a major role, major role. That's why we always, with the 3M, we always start with nutrition first, okay? So obviously when we're doing strength exercises, some tips that we need to focus on is really on your abdominal muscles as a core. So we don't put attention in other muscle groups like our hip flexors or even our shoulders. It's very easy, especially in crunches to engage our shoulders or our quads in the movement. Try to really focus on contracting those ab muscles. Go slow so you can feel those muscles work. And ab muscles need rest too, guys. Remember, take at least a day off between your core workouts, all right? So crunches here, basic thing with crunches, form is big, when you're lying on your back, your knees are bent, your feet are about shoulder width apart on the floor, place your hands lightly behind your head, sort of cradling the base of your skull, and your elbows are pointing out, no chicken elbows, okay? Pulling your head in and your chin down to your chest, no pulling on your head, it's very bad for your cervical spine. So keeping your low back towards the floor, engage your abs and just lift your shoulder blades off the floor, almost towards the ceiling rather than crunching in towards your knees. Lift them up towards the ceiling, keeping your neck long and focusing your gaze, you know, looking between your knees somewhere. Concentrate on squeezing those ribs forward to your hips and then slowly lower and repeat for about 15 to 20 reps is pretty decent for a good uh, crunch. Okay. A good crunch. Um, if you are worried about lying down and crunching, that's not a problem. You can also do it standing. There's standing crunches. We do a lot of this, um, with our, our clients. Okay. Same principles apply. If you notice, um, me here in this diagram, you know, I'm not rounding my back to bring my elbow to my knee. I'm still in a good posture and I'm really just focused on engaging those obliques, those, which is the outer um, muscles in our core, and just crunching, same principles, really, ab into, our belly button into ab. 
All right. Are you guys ready to see what? I'm going to bring my video up here. What? Oh, I almost gave it. I almost gave it away. What's the most effective ab exercise is the title for that? You guys ready? What do you guys think it is? Tell me in the comments what do you think it is? I don't know why I'm not writing down here. What do you think it is? Tell me in the comments. Let's see. Mm. Yes. Oh, I see. Oh, someone got it. There's a bunch of, I couldn't keep track. There was a bunch of stuff flooding in. Okay, awesome. Someone got it. I can't remember. I think it was Natalie. She said, ah, bicycles. Yes, you are right. So in a study that was just commissioned by the American Council on Exercise, the bicycle maneuver was actually named the most effective ab exercise. And that is because they obviously did different lab experiments. They showed that ab bicycle, it, they actually engages the most ab muscles at the same time, including our rectus abdominis, which is our front abs, which a lot of people call the six pack when actually there's eight muscles in there and our obliques, which is our muscles along the side. We have internal and external obliques. So the major muscle groups, okay? And obviously our transverse muscles as well, which is our deep down inner muscles that we really need to have stabilized first before we can get that nice lean core in our forties. So those are the four major muscle groups and they're all targeted here in the ab bicycle. Plus, the biggest bonus I think from this movement is that we're less apt to call on other muscle groups, such as our hip flexors to help out with the movement, right? So it's a lot easier to feel that burn and that engagement in our abs. Form again, guys, with this one is key. A lot of times I see people pulling on their necks, trying to crunch their elbow into their knee. No, here, lie on your back on the floor, lower back, press to the ground, put your hands again, gently behind your head, cradling the base, elbows reaching out to the sides, bring your knees up to about a 45 degree angle, and then slowly go through a bicycle pedal motion. Start with that first, and then draw your left shoulder to your right knee, and then your right shoulder to your left knee, and then alternate. Okay, it's to make it easier, maintain that 90 degree angle bend in your knees if you want to, and you don't have to bring that knee as far in, but slow and controlled is key and breathing. I, I see a lot of people, hey guys, I see you jumping up. I see a lot of people um, not breathing through the movement. Okay, any questions on this, guys? Let me know. I am going to, where's my little video? I am going to um, put on my video. If I can see it here, let me know if you have any questions. Hey, Jason. Hey, Pamela. Yeah, sorry. Don't worry. It'll be in our um, Facebook group. I'll keep the recording up so that you can watch it. And see if I, I can't get my little video to pop up, but that's okay. I wanted to see you guys again. Oh. You're messing everything up. This is why this is a very informal training. I had my four-year-old in here helping me out. Um, but I just want to touch on a, something for you guys and then get into some Q&A as we sort of wrap it up here. Here's the thing. I, I the, the 30 minutes or so that you're spending with me here today and doing these trainings is amazing. And it is a great start. And I'm super proud of you because you've put some time towards you, your health and your goals and what you want to achieve this year. Okay. We're halfway through the year. So how did you want, you know, back in January, you probably made some goals for yourself or thought about some things that were maybe possible for you, how to look and how to feel, even if you're in your forties and how are you towards those goals? So want you to revisit that. And then this is obviously a great start. This is a great start. You coming here and learning more. But I obviously thought like, how can I help these guys more? I can do more trainings, 100%. I can keep resources at you. I can give you more content and, and emails. But really when it comes down to it, we're such individuals. And, you know, I can give you the, 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 the principles and, you know, the, 
the philosophies behind the things that I do and why it works in our 40s and specific to being in our 40, over 40. Um, but your situation in your life is so different. You're different from your neighbors, different from your cousins. So I really feel there's more benefit if you are looking for more of a transformation and really want to achieve your goals, there's a benefit of, of us talking. And it's literally grassroots, you and me on the phone, one-on-one, -on -one, going over your goals, the roadblocks that have been derailing you in the past or even now from achieving those goals, and what is going to get you um, moving past that. This is, I will preface this by saying, this is not a coaching call. Um, I will put the link in the chat for you guys right now to have. It is 100% free, but it is not a coaching call. I call these clarity calls because I can tell you exactly how to eat. I can tell you exactly how to train, give you schedules, but it really is clarity behind what has been failing you before and how to move past it. That really, and anyone that's done these calls for me, if you guys are listening to this, pipe in, let me know in the comments below what you've gotten out of it, because the clarity is really the biggest thing. Okay. And so the, how it works is you get a link and this is my online schedule. Find a time that works for you. If something doesn't look, doesn't um, jive, just to send me a quick PM and we'll find something that does easy peasy. It takes two seconds. Okay. You and me on the phone. Yes. It's 100% free. Okay, the only caveat that I will say is this, if you are looking for a quick fix, if you're looking for a laundry list of how to's, if you are not ready to really look at the root cause of why your body's holding on to extra fluff, and there's a reason mentally or physically why your bodies hold on to fat, especially in our forties, if you are looking for more um, like lotions and potions and you know the drill, I'm not your girl. And that is totally cool. It is 100% fine. If down the road, you feel like it's a jive, then let's talk. But I am just not that quick fix. I need people that are coachable and ready to get to the root cause, root cause of why their body's holding on to fat. Because there's always a reason. There's always a reason. So if you're somebody that feels like they won't, they want that clarity. They're maybe ready for uh, taking the step of transformation. They want to hear more about what roadblocks they're experiencing, how we can get through them together. And maybe there's a fit working together. Maybe there's not, but we'll at least talk through. So you leave the call with some sort of, ah, right. To move forward rather than just feeling stuck. Cause that feeling of stuck and trying this and trying that and trying this and trying that sucks. And I know it sucks because I've been there. So if you feel like um, you just want to, this is something for you, you're ready. You're like a nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, ready to take a step further. I am here for you. Schedule your call. Again, please do not schedule if you're not. I will say that I'm pretty strict on that, please, because it's really you know, important for the people that are ready to have this conversation. If you're not, that's totally cool. It's totally cool. It doesn't mean forever. Just maybe means right now, you know, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it is that you can't. That's totally cool. I'm always here for you. Always. All right. So that's my little offer. I will put, um, I'm going to put the uh, link in the chat right now so you guys can see it. Then we're going to do a quick q and It looks like my little, girl, my little monkey is uh, letting me do that. Thank you for being so, everyone, for being so open and amazing yeah <laughs> I totally get it I have kids too yeah like what are you gonna do right she's my little monkey she's spicy I'm gonna go take her to get her her ears checked for sure because something's going on there okay so that's the link um Facebook I will do the same for you I'm gonna do it right now um to book the call okay if you can't find it for whatever reason then just pm me not a problem Okay, let's dive. I'm going to take a couple of uh, questions here. If you guys have to jump off, totally cool. I'm going to take a couple of questions here before um, we head out and start the rest of the day. Again, if you have any comments, you're watching this on the replay, then just um, uh, post in the comments below and I will, I will answer. Okay, questions here. So are you recommend how, how do we, this is a big question. Are you recommending that we work our upper abs, lower abs? 
separately. Okay, Bethany, um, I'm not, let me know if I'm answering this correctly. So your upper abs and lower abs are actually the part of your, your rectus abdominis. It's actually that six pack or eight pack, um, which is that middle line of abs. That's where our most women would like to see those sort of tone lines um, happen. Do you wanna work them upper and lower separately? It doesn't matter. I, I like to work the top down um, with clients in the sense that it helps us not activate other muscle groups like our hip flexors and our group in our glutes, um, but it's more of an advanced strategy. I'd honestly take the key three key principles that I talked about here. So the posture, stability, and then the strength and toning go in that order. And that will be um, a great start. I'm pretty, oh, she's saying I'm pretty advanced, but I'm just in my setup, so I'm not seeing the results. Okay, if you're advanced in your sit-ups, which I assume means that you're feel like you're strong in your core, you're just not seeing the toning and tightening that you want. Number one, nutrition. Okay, so PME, and let's dive into that a little bit more. What is holding you back from the nutrition for your body to naturally release the fluff? Guys, listen, our bodies don't want to be fat. Fat is protection. Okay, fat is there. Our, it, our we need it for our hormones to regulate. We need our brain needs it. Um, but when we are storing extra fat, there is a reason mentally or physically. Okay. So that's why obviously diets don't work, but, um, nutrition, sorry, Bethany, I got ahead of myself, but nutrition definitely start there. If you feel like you're strong, then go back. Or I would also recommend do more stability exercises, get that inner core stabilized and balanced first. Okay. You might feel like you're stronger, but maybe, maybe something's there is a mess. Okay. What do you write? You talked about bloating. This is Sam, Samantha. We talked about bloating. What um, foods do you recommend to help guard against that? I'm not sure if I have food intolerances. Uh, so this is such a multifaceted answer. So it's hard to reply really quickly, but food intolerances are a reality, right? So it's very common that especially in our forties, foods that you could eat in your twenties and thirties, your body is just not processing or digesting the same, which causes into some kind of inflammation and bloating response. Um, very typical of that is, is dairy and gluten. Okay. It doesn't mean everybody. Um, it doesn't mean everything. Um, it just means that you don't have the digestive enzymes right at this stage of the game to properly digest things, which causes again, the inflammation and bloating. So different things you can do. You can do an elimination diet, right? And take those things out for a week. Your body will tell you really quick when you reintroduce them, how they, how it feels. Um, but I, I'm, I get kind of mad in the sense where people are like, don't eat this and don't eat that healthy food and don't eat that because of whatever reason. And it doesn't, it's just so funny because it's different stages. Your body has different enzymes and even different, if you have stress in your life, that affects the different enzymes in your microbiome and how you can process and digest food. So, you know, saying that this natural food is bad and that natural food is bad may not be for a lifetime. And really it just comes down to how your body's reacting to a lot of it comes down to stress and how your body's ability to um, break it down, break down that food. But that's what, those are the two most common things. Inflammation is key. You got to get the inflammation out of your body. It has to come out of your body. Okay. To really feel that um, tightness in your core. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I felt in my forties was just that bloating distended belly inflammation. And it came down to nutrition. Okay. Nutrition and nutrition protocol for you might not be the same for me. That's why seeking um, professional support, I think is really big on that stuff. Okay. Let me see how many times do you recommend? I'll take this as the last one. Then we'll jump off because this is a good one too. Jennifer, how many times do you recommend that we work our abs in a week then to get that nice toned ab muscles that you're talking about? I love it. Listen, if you are working out regularly, eating with in your nutrition, have the nutrition as a foundation, you've been working on that pelvic tilt in your posture, then, you know, when you're doing a good compound, you know, either, you know, high intensity interval training hit is very, very common, or maybe, you know, like a power yoga or Pilates, CrossFit, whatever it is. If you're doing multi joint functional movements, you're working out your core a lot, 
right? So if you want to target your core, which is what I'm thinking that you're talking about, if you want to target your core, um, I usually say about three times a week is good. You know, every other, every two, three days to do it. Just don't do it back to back. Okay. Don't do it back to back. Okay. Your body needs time to repair. You're still ripping apart muscles and asking them to repair into stronger, leaner muscle. It takes time, especially in our forties. Okay. So yeah, I would do that. It doesn't, the abs don't need to be, you know, a half hour long thing. You know, if you're doing them a nice, you know, take those movements that I showed you, that's a great 10 minute ab blast right there. Totally cool. All right, guys. So I am going to leave that for today. Again, apologize. I apologize for my little four-year-old interlude, but that's all right. I hope you guys got great value out of this. I hope if you are looking for more information, ready for transformation, ready to really rock out the summer, um, that you do book a call with me. Let's, let's figure out what's going on with you and, uh, see if there's maybe you know, some roadblocks that we can overcome to get you to your goals. And, you know, if you've done the call with me, I'd love for you to comment what you've gotten out of it. And if you loved it or not, because I love these calls, I really, really do, because there's so many commonalities, but there's so many differences too. Um, and we really do have a lot of fun on them. All right. And uh, if you need those resources, PM me as well, flexible meal planning for busy women over 40 and the 21 day, which is uh, over 60% discount um, for you guys only on um, my email list in my group. Okay. And I will say adieu. Bye guys. I had so much fun doing this. I can't wait to do it again. We'll talk soon. Bye.